Welcome to the Acupuncture Outsider Podcast. My name is Richard Hazel, and in the time it takes for you to commute to or from work, I hope to have shared something of interest about orthopedic acupuncture using motor points, trigger points, myofascial slings, uh, neurofunctional acupuncture, segmental treatments, anything that crosses my mind that seems to be of interest. I hope you'll enjoy it. Hello and welcome to the Acupuncture Outsider. This is Richard Hazel. Today I want to talk about acupuncture needles, needle gauges in specific, really focusing on having the right tool or the best tool for what you're trying to accomplish. Um, In orthopedic acupuncture, having the right needle gauge and needle length will be more important to you than if you're if you're doing more traditional uh, distal acupuncture you can with distal you can pretty much make do with any needle gauge that you have um, because you're really just trying to get a chi sensation um, in order for your treatment to have a good effect and that really is often working more with the mechanoreceptors and the fascia which you can often do at even a very superficial uh, level. I know if you're doing some master tongue, there are times that you might be tapping the bone, but you can often, uh, for the points I'm thinking of, you could do with almost any gauge needle. Um, You you will not need a strong needle because it's just a matter of getting to the right depth. Um, In orthopedic acupuncture, we really have to think very um, three-dimensionally. We're not... We're not just looking at the surface of the skin and using um, anatomical landmarks to find a point and then just to tap a needle in deep enough that it will give a chi sensation and not fall over. With orthopedic acupuncture, we're targeting certain muscles and those muscles are not always the most superficial of the, of the muscles. And it seems the closer to the bone the muscle is, the more likely it's a dense muscle. Um, A lot of our postural muscles that are constantly working to maintain our stability um, will be much denser muscles, and they have more uh, more slow twitch muscles that don't fatigue, muscle fibers that don't fatigue. So they end up being very dense muscles. Um, You'll notice things like the the extensors of the neck and the low back, the extensors of the low back. Those muscles will be very dense. And if you're treating somebody who has pain, then they may be tighter even than the normal amount of tension and density. If you're treating someone who is older, very likely you're going to be treating muscles that are very, very tight, um, assuming they have not had an orthopedic acupuncture treatment before. Their their muscles will be extremely tight and often ischemic. And your 40-gauge sarin will just really not cut it. It's going to be very difficult to get a super thin needle into an extremely tight ischemic muscle. So I tend to use either a 32 or 30 gauge needle um, for most um, orthopedic acupuncture treatments. The 30 gauge needle is almost a must for most people with neck problems because of those neck muscles being so super tight. And really, it's all about patient comfort. Um, If if you tap your needle into the back of uh, someone's neck and they have very tight uh, neck muscles, which is most people who have neck pain, um, you're you're going to find that your needle may not get to the depth 
or into the belly of that muscle very well if you're using a really thin needle. Um, I'm thinking of the semispinalis capitis on the back of the neck. And if you're, if you're using a really thin needle, you're going to get through what's most likely just the trapezius aponeurosis at the very back of the neck. Uh, you get through the skin and through that, that fascia. And then you're going to hit the semispinalis capitis, which is very tight. And your needle is going to bend. And it's not going to want to go in. And in order to save time, you'll probably choose to keep trying um, so you don't have to go grab another, a different gauge needle. And you'll be moving that needle around and spinning it and really pressing, trying to focus on, you know, uh, intentionally guiding that needle into this tight muscle. And you waste a lot of time, and it could be uncomfortable for the patient to have you kind of rooting around, trying to get a needle into the muscle that's giving them a lot of pain. If you're using a 30-gauge needle, and you tap it, and you guide it directly, you'll feel when you hit the semispinalis capitis, it'll feel a little more like cheese than butter, like I would say First, you feel the butter when you're getting through that superficial layer, and then you'll feel cheese. You'll feel that dense sensation when you get to the correct level where the semispinalis capitis is. And then you'll be able to, to gently guide your needle straight into the middle of the belly of that muscle without the needle bending and without having to manipulate it. You'll just guide it in slowly as... And I always, um, when I'm doing that, I'm telling the patient, you're going to feel the muscle cramp on the needle because it's so tight. It's going to have a reaction. It's going to cramp really quickly, and then it'll relax. And um, as long as you're telling people what to expect, they're not surprised. And if they're a little wary, they'll, they'll trust you more that you know what they're going to feel. So the same goes for things like the glutes. Um, when I was working in New York City, I had a lot of patients who were bodybuilders. And bodybuilders have very dense, um, lean muscle mass. And I think, you know, using performance-enhancing drugs will help muscle to develop um, very lean lean powerful muscle without a lot of fat and that muscle is more dense than the muscle that you're going to treat on your average patient um, for glutes i use the 30 gauge 75 millimeter needles for most patients um, it is true that the 32 gauge 75 can be sufficient for many of your patients. I feel like female patients um, often do not have the same muscle density that male patients do. So if you're primarily treating female patients, you could try with the 32. Maybe you could even get away with the 34 uh, by 75 for some of your female patients. Um, to not waste time, um, having to go and get a different gauge, I stick with 32s, assuming they're going to be comfortable, and they are. And um, I don't, I'm not like promoting any particular brands, but my favorite 30 by 75 needle is a piece needle. It's like butter. They they just slide, they glide, they feel much. They just feel really good. You do not feel the same sort of friction that I might feel on some other um, needles that I've tried. Um, so that's my favorite, the piece needles um, for the for the 75s. I, I, use, uh, I use the Dongbang uh, DBC Spring 10 needles for most of the points where I'm using a 30 gauge by 50 or a 30 gauge by 60 needle. Um, that's just the sort of 
workhorse needle that I've been using forever, and, and I just feel comfortable with it. It feels good in my hand. I know how it feels, and I know um, the sensations that I'm feeling when I'm using the DBCs um, because I'm just so used to them. And really, that's, that's so important for orthopedic acupuncture. Um, like I said, we have to think in three dimensions. We need to know what layers we're going through and what we should be feeling. Um, you need to know when you're hitting something that is that you don't want to push through. You have time to, to change your angle when you're guiding your needle in and you feel something spongy that's resisting you like a rubber band. I don't push through that. It's probably some vessel and I'm going to more likely bruise the patient if I do that, or they may feel some pain. Um, generally, um, I'm very aware of what I'm feeling at each level, so I know where I am in the muscles. And so we're talking about glutes. Um, gluteus maximus is um, actually, well, I'll say on bodybuilders, gluteus maximus in the area that I usually treat it that happens to also be the same area that they usually inject their performance-enhancing drugs, and there can be a lot of scar tissue there. In that case, you're really going to need a 30-gauge needle. I wouldn't even try a 32. In fact, some of my patients who are not on any kind of steroids but work out a lot, um, I find when I've tried to use the 32s, they just bend like spaghetti on some of these some of these um, athletic um, patients. So I just stick with the 30s, so I don't have to switch around. I really think if you if you know how to insert a needle, and I use a tube, and I hit the needle pretty hard, um, you get past the skin layer, and it's not uncomfortable, even when you're using a thicker needle. Um, for some people with trigger points, I might use an even thicker um, needle, like a 35 um, or a 25 by 75. Um, you definitely, sometimes it's a little easier on the patient to use a thicker needle on a trigger point because as soon as you arrive at the trigger point, if it's a thicker needle, it's the, the trigger point is very, going to very quickly become irritated enough to twitch. Whereas with a thinner needle, I know you're always thinking thinner is going to be more comfortable for my patient, but you're not going to get a twitch from a trigger point until you irritate it enough that it starts to twitch. So that could be a lot of needle manipulation if you're using a really thin needle. And like I say, when you're using a thicker needle and you 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 know where your trigger point is and you know exactly where you want to go with it when you get to that spot very quickly you'll get fasciculations and or little local twitch response from that trigger point so a thicker needle is actually easier for you and easier for the patient because if i can get a good couple twitches on a on a glute medius trigger point it's very likely going to be um, deactivated enough that they feel much, much better. I don't keep going at it necessarily um, for more twitches than that. If, if I, after I get a couple twitches, I, I take the needle out, press on it, and the patient confirms that it no longer hurts, it just feels like a sore spot. It'll feel like a dull soreness. Um, so what I was going to say about um, needles and needle depth. I think about um, the gluteus minimus, which is deep to the glute medius, and then and that's deep to the, the glute max. So when you think about treating the gluteus minimus, if you have a very thin needle, you may get to the level of the gluteus minimus and think that you've hit the bone when you have it. Um, and if you have a super skinny needle, it may be difficult to 
get into an ischemic gluteus minimus without bending the handle of your needle or just not getting to where you want it to be. If you're using a 30 gauge needle, you'll first go through that fascia lata and the, and the gluteus maximus, and then you'll feel the density of the gluteus medius. And when you get to gluteus minimus, I always tell the patient, it's like, it's, it's just like automatic for me. I'll tell them when I get to the right point, you're going to feel a dull ache because this muscle is super tight and it'll, it'll be a little achy. And, and, and I always get that feedback. They say, oh yeah, they feel that. When you get to the gluteus minimus, it's a dense muscle. And if you're treating hip pain, you need to know how to treat gluteus minimus. Um, when you get to the gluteus minimus, they're usually side lying, you'll feel that density. And if you have a strong needle, you can gently guide the needle to the depth that you want it to be before using some electric stimulation on the needle, um, assuming there's no contraindications with that patient, um, and get it to loosen up really, really well. And it makes a huge difference for people with, with hip pain, but you have to know where you are in, in that three-dimensional um, perspective. So um, another example of sort of thinking three-dimensionally, um, I'll use a 32-gauge needle for arms and legs for the most part. Um, caveat, I, w- I would just say the older the patient, the more likely their low leg, anything below the knee, is extremely tight and ischemic. And you do them no favors using a super thin needle on ischemic muscle that you can almost not get your needle into. If you need to release the soleus, the tibialis posterior, the flexor digitorum longus, the peroneals, the tib anterior, extensor digitorum longus, on, on older patients, you really should use a 30-gauge needle. And I know there's a lot of people who have been schooled in the thought of what is too much, too draining for your older patients. And I'm going to say, you know, do exactly what you believe is the right thing to do and don't and you know don't listen to me if you're not if you're not open-minded to to what i'm telling you but i i have a lot of patients who are seniors and if i did not treat the ischemic muscles in their legs they could not get better if we're talking whether we're talking about neuropathies talking about circulatory issues of the lower leg, um, talking about, uh, you know, knee pain, hip pain. Those lower leg muscles on people over 60 and 70 get extremely ischemic, and you can gently treat them. You do not have to overdo it. But waking up those muscles will be essential to them having stability in their ankles, better circulation, and just overall less pain, less numbness um, in their feet. Um, And that's just my personal um, clinical experience. And of course, they're going to be sore when you wake up an ischemic muscle and the body recognizes that tissue is not healthy. The white blood cells and the inf- inflammation are going to come in to clear out the dead tissue, and there is 
a healing process that is muscle soreness. Um, but if you explain that to your patients so that they know when they're sore for a day or two or three, um, that it's completely normal. And when their quality of life is improved after your treatments, they will have completely forgotten that they were sore for a day or two uh, after your treatment. Um, I go gently with my senior patients. I don't do too much electric stimulation. I remember that their muscles are extremely ischemic and that they're going to have more soreness. And I treat accordingly. And I explain it to them. As long as you have buy-in from your patients, they're not going to be upset when they have soreness. And I, and I, really, do, I really do ask their permission for almost everything that I do. I'll say, your, your, uh, let's say we're talking about something in the low leg. Your peroneals are super tight. And I'll say, can you feel this? And they'll say, yes, that hurts. And I'll say, yeah, because you've had the, the remnants of, of your ankle sprain 20 years ago. Um, and your ankles are not stabilizing because these muscles are super, super tight. So what I want to do today is get your ankle stability back. And I'll probably treat the peroneus longus, per peroneus brevis, soleus, and the tibialis posterior just to start. Just get those woken up. And I might, I might use electric stimulation for uh, two hertz for a minute or two. But I'm, I might just, you know, chat with them while they retain needles for 10 or 15 minutes actually getting the needle into the, the point will often be sufficient. You don't need a big, you don't need to make it twitch. Just slide it in. If you know your points, you know where you're going, you're already going to get uh, a bit of a release of that muscle. And then if you use your, your handheld point stimulator, like a pointer XL or pointer plus, you can get a little bit of a, contraction of that muscle, wake it up, get it, get it, um, functioning it makes a huge, huge difference for somebody who, who is dealing with either numbness and tingling in their feet or some sort of toe pain or heel pain, ankle pain, or maybe even, maybe they even have hip issues. Um, if you can't stabilize at the ankle, your hips are going to work harder to stabilize you. So Ankles and hips need to both be functioning. Um, so what I was what I was saying was like for the for the low leg, let's say I'm not treating an, a senior, let's say I'm treating an athlete. The I'll, I'll use like a 32 by 50. If you're going to treat the extensor digitorum longus, for instance. Um, which extends the toes, helps lift the foot. Um, before you get to extensor digitorum longus, you have to go through the tibialis anterior. So you have to know what you're feeling. And the tib anterior could be very tight. So you're going to get through that layer. And then you're going to have to feel for when you get a little deeper into the extensor digitorum longus. Um, sometimes you get feedback from the patient. They'll feel it go down to their foot. Um, but um, it's important to be able to know what you're feeling when you're needling. And having um, the right tools will help you. If you're using a needle that's too thin, it's just really hard to push past that, that density, that muscle density. And I think there are probably people who have the right treatment plan, but when they execute, they may not be getting the right depths. And, they, and part of that could be that they don't have the right tools. They're so afraid of using a thicker needle. Really, I think it comes down to not just thinking three-dimensionally and having that that sense of where you're going, but 
the confidence that, that you're not hurting the patient if you're using a 30 gauge needle. Um, if you know how to insert the needle quickly and have confidence when you tap the needle, you will get past the skin layer quickly and they won't feel it. They really won't feel it. And I mean, I've treated so many acupuncturists as patients and I get feedback from acupuncturists all the time about how it was not painful and how it was like, you know, great treatment and gentle. And I use 30 gauge needles. So it's really all about insertion of the needle and knowing where you are in the anatomy, what layer you're at. Um, for the low back, I need 30 gauge needles. Um, you have to go through that thoracolumbar fascia and, you know, part of, part of that, um, fascia is, uh, is connected to the lats, um, to get to the quadratus lumborum. Um, so you, you need to know what you feel. You can push to depth at the lateral border of the, of the spinal erectors and feel where the QL is. Um, but you still have to tap the needle and get past those layers to get into the QL, the quadratus lumborum. And just a little tip, if you're looking for the motor point there, it's like one, one finger width above the pelvis, right at that border of the um, spinal erectors. And if you angle your needle slightly medially, like you're going a little bit under the outer edge of the spinal erectors, you'll get a great motor point location right there. Um, but again, I'm going to use a 30 gauge for that. If somebody comes in with postural muscles that are causing pain, they're really tight, tight muscles, you're not helping them to use a super skinny needle and have to keep just jabbing away trying to get it into that motor point. Use a 30 gauge needle. Um, 32, 32 by 50s for forearms and legs. For like when I say legs, I should say upper legs, um, hamstrings, quads, adductors. I'll use a 32. Um, so as motor point, I'll use a 32 by 50, 32 by 60 even on some people. Um, glutes, I want a 30 or a 35 by 75. Uh, on almost all points for the glutes. Um, TFL, I'll use a 30 by 75. Gluteus minimus, 30, 30 by 75. Um, back of the neck, 30 by, 30 by 50. Um, side of the neck, 32s, 32 by 50 for medial scalenes, SCM. Those are, those are really gentle, like soft, easy to treat muscles. They're not, they're not hard to tap a needle into. So I can use a 32 there. I could probably use a 34 if I felt like it. Um, face, I always use something much thinner. Um, 36, 38, because the face does not have dense muscles. E even the masseter is not so dense that you can't get a skinny needle in it. You could easily get a skinny needle and who wants to bruise the patient? I'm going to use a super thin needle um, for facial points. But, you know, if you're using a short, thin needle, it's still strong. It's still sturdy. Um, it's when they're uh, the, like the 50 millimeter length and they're a 38 gauge that they become like little noodles. Um, so those are the, uh, those are the, suggestions I have for needle um, thickness. I wanted to, I made a couple notes here about things that I wanted to make sure I cover. Um, some patients have very thick skin. You may have noticed this. Um, if you're getting a lot of stingers on somebody, because you have that day, right? Like you have a patient and like, like you put in a needle and they say, oh, that hurts. And then and then you ask them, was it, does it sting or is it, you know, maybe it was just a quick contraction of the muscle and they think it hurts. It was a dull soreness. 
Um, but no, if it stings, um, you know, it didn't get past the skin layer. And then if they tell me again that it stung, I'm going to switch to a thicker gauge needle. So um, I'm thinking about a patient where I was treating his upper trap, middle and lower traps. And for those, I don't, I'm, you know, I don't have to go deep on the, I want to stay really pretty superficial on those. So I use a 32 for those. Um, but this one patient, his skin is so thick. And, um, and when I switched to thirties, it was like butter. It was so much easier, easier for me, easier for him. And then it just occurred to me, you know, like for him, I need to remember, you know, use a thicker needle because he has, he has very thick skin. And if I want to get past that dermal layer where those, those pain sensors are, I just need a thick needle and just tap it and, and be done with it. Um, let's see. Oh, um, if you're treating patients, use, you want to, you want to stimulate the motor points of tight muscles for somebody who is pregnant or um, has a pacemaker, or for some reason um, you feel electric stimulation is not appropriate, or maybe you just you know you need to treat a friend and you're you're in your ho- your home and you don't have all your equipment but you got a box of needles, you want to get a twitch from the motor point of the muscles that you're trying to release just because it's going to release better. Um, it is true that you can very likely put a needle into the motor point and retain it for 20 minutes and it will probably get you some relaxation of that muscle. But if you want a quick, a quick treatment where you don't have to retain needles, get a twitch and getting that twitch will be easier for you with a 30 or a 32 gauge needle. If you're trying to get a good twitch on a motor point with something too thin, it's a lot harder for you. So make it easy on yourself and use a 30 gauge or a 32 gauge needle when you want to twitch on a motor point for someone where you're not going to use electric stimulation. Um, When I know I'm going to use electric stimulation, I very rarely am insisting on getting a twitch from the motor point. Um, The exceptions might be piriformis, gluteus medius and gluteus maximus. I really like to get a twitch on those. Um, but if I'm treating then the hamstrings, the gastrox, I'm not really worried about getting a twitch. I know where the motor points are. I tap the needle in, I insert it to depth and I come back to it and test with my pointer. And almost always it's going to move and I'm going to hook up the stem. It's just gentle. It's like the gentlest thing if you can just know where the points are, put the needle there and come back with your electric stem to treat it. But I do treat, the reason I get a twitch on the piriformis, gluteus medius, gluteus max, especially the piriformis and gluteus medius, you're probably getting a two for one if you get a twitch. You're going to release a bit of trigger point, some myofascial restriction, as well as resetting the muscle and the nerve muscle communication by stimulating that motor point so it's like a two for one um and you'll find in the glutes everybody has trigger points in their glutes trigger points in the glute medius and piriformis is very often full of trigger points so um i'm trying to think if there's another one that i like to get a twitch on um coracobrachialis is another one Coracobrachialis is kind of like the piriformis. It's like full of trigger points and and often getting tight and often causing pain. Um, So a nice twitch on the coracobrachialis is good when you're treating anterior shoulder pain. Um, And as far as trigger points go, 30 gauge all the way, um, sometimes thicker. Um, Everyone will have their own preference for needles or needle brands. Um, but I definitely would say a 30 gauge needle for trigger points. Um, trying to think there is a 
brand from Wabo, um, Silver Star, they'll make a, a very thick gauge acupuncture needle, um, 25 gauge, um, 75 millimeter needle. Um, and every once in a while, they come in handy. Um, if you're treating a gluteus medius trigger point on somebody with dense muscle, that that uh, 25 gauge needle is going to be perfect. You get to depth, you get there quickly without it bending and twisting around like spaghetti. You get directly into that trigger point with accuracy. You get, you move it a couple times, you get a twitch, you take the needle out and there's no blood sh shooting out. There's no, there's no black bruising. The person feels improvement. They feel less pain. They didn't feel pain from the needle being super thick. They have no idea that you just used a 25 gauge needle. All they know is they got a twitch and they feel better and you didn't have to abuse the tissue until it twitched. And you may have noticed if you're working on trigger points a lot, you know that the older the trigger point is, the harder it can get to, to, to get it to start twitching. I, I know if I'm working on a trigger point that's more than 10 years old, if I'm needling it and it's just barely want, it barely wants to twitch. And that person very likely is, is not going to get a whole lot of relief and they should expect it to be sore. And you need to follow up a f uh, the following week so that when they come back, the muscle it has better blood circulation, that trigger point is a little healthier, and you're going to start getting good twitches on that second round. Um, if it's something over 10 years old, just expect that it's not going to release very well on the first treatment. Give it a good week to heal, and the next time you see them, you'll start to get the good twitches that are going to release that trigger point and get them the relief that they're looking for. And again, I'm going to use a 30 gauge, 30 gauge needle. Um, let me think if there was something else. So okay, so no, that's um, I pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about there. Um, I would just say um, I hope you will experiment with 30 gauge needles if you're not currently using them in your practice. Um, if you're treating glutes and you're not using 75 length or longer, there's a good chance you're not ever treating to the right depth for a good gluteus medius or gl good gluteus minimus release. Um, I highly recommend you get the, th the long 75 uh, millimeter needles. Um, if you have not been trained in person, um, this is a this is a difficult thing to learn if you're not learning in person because it's all about touch and sensation and sensation of what's at the end of your needle. The density changes as you get to different levels. Um, so I really highly recommend that you train with somebody to learn how to properly treat motor points and trigger points. It's it's um it's just not something you're going to pick up well from a video. The the that's like so two dimensional. The the three dimensional aspect of it can only be experienced in in person, and you really want to have somebody to ask questions and someone who can show you and explain it to you and confirm what you're feeling when you're getting there. Um, I remember many times teaching treatment of the semispinalis capitis in seminars. And when somebody wasn't quite getting it, I would come over and I would feel what they were doing. They had gotten past the, the trapezius aponeurosis on the back of the neck but had not really gotten into the belly of the semispinalis capitis. Um, so you just show them, you just needed to go one millimeter deeper and you'd have been perfectly in the spot you're looking for. And that changes everything for somebody. Um, they, they 
They start to grasp it. They have confidence. Their partner feels the improvement when they get off the table. Um, those are the those are the really key things about doing a live uh, seminar. Um, I'm hopeful that in 2022 we'll be doing many more live seminars. Um, I'm optimistic that that will be happening. Um, we, we'll see what happens, but um, if all goes well, I'll be seeing some people in Amsterdam in March, and I'll be back in Poland in May. Um, and if things are going well, then we'll do something here in the States and in New York, Dan Dominguez and I will probably do something live in, uh, in New York sometime in 2022, assuming everything is going well with COVID. So, um, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for listening. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's rich hazel and my email address is rich at richhazel.com. Um, I look forward to hearing from you if you're having successes that you want to share. Um, and uh, that's it for this week. Have a good week.